Hi, I'm Natalia from IntelliCAD Technology Consortium, and this is the review of our IntelliCAD 9.2 release. IntelliCAD 9.2 offers a variety of new features and additions to existing functionality, and I would like to start with selection cycling. This new feature will be very useful when working with complicated drawings. I have a drawing with lots of entities. Most of them are very close together and some of them are located on top of each other, which makes selection complicated. I will show how the selection cycling feature can help you here. There are three forms of selection cycling and all of them are available from the selection cycling tab in the options dialog or using the selection cycling system variable. While multi-click to cycle through overlapping entities option is selected, you can click on a crowded area and keep clicking until the necessary entity is highlighted. Control click option works the same way, you just have to hold control button while clicking on overlapping entities. The most interesting option is the display section cycling list. When activated, selection dialog displayed after clicking somewhere close to where you think necessary entity located. In this dialog, you can see the list of all entities located under the pick box. Every line of this list contains the entity type and its color. When you move up and down the list, the selected entity is highlighted, so you don't have to guess which entity you are selecting. I found selection cycling very handy when working with hatches. It's always hard to select a boundary. Selection cycling is also very useful when using editing commands. And one more selection method added in IntelliCAD 92 is selection pane. You can activate it using the cell filter command or Ctrl plus two hotkeys. It consists of several tabs that list properties of entities in the current drawing, layer, color, entity type, and line type. Double click a specific property to turn on or off the related filter for the current selection. For example, if I want to select all yellow circles on layer one with the dashed line type, I turn all of these filters on and see that all entities with specified properties are highlighted. You can use the clear button that turns off all filters on all tabs. New section line and elevation line commands are available in Telecad 9.2. Using these two commands, you can create a section or elevation view of any 3D drawing. To start working with the elevation line command, you just have to specify start and end points for the elevation view and then the insertion point to locate the 2D elevation projection. To see an updated 2D projection after elevation line changes, turn on the IC Auto Update system variable. It will automatically update the 2D projection view wherever you grip edit your section or elevation line. If you have a very large drawing, a slow machine, or a lot of changes, you can turn IC Auto Update off and manually update the 2D projection to save time. It's not very clear which part of an elevation line is a cutting line. So for this purpose, an elevation callout was added where you can designate location, direction, and ID number of the elevation. You can reverse the direction of the elevation line using the elevation line reverse command or reverse from the context menu. One more command related to elevation line functionality is the elevation generate command. It creates a 2D projection from the selected elevation line and places the result at a specified location. The section line command creates a polyline instead of a line, allowing you to create complex section lines. Let's take a look at the section line grips. Using corner grips, you can change the length and rotation angle for the cutting line and use the center grip to move it just like with a regular line. Use grips from the opposite side of the cutting line to change the height of a section. The last grip on the section line turns the Use Model Extends for height property on and off. When turned on, the section line will automatically adjust its height to model extents. All these grips work the same way for elevation line. All commands and system variables reviewed for elevation line work for section line as well, except for the reverse command. Section line and elevation line commands are achievements of the BEAM Special Interest Group, and I want to mention more additions from this team. These improvements are related to IEC objects. 
This part of IntelliCAD functionality is constantly growing and in IntelliCAD 92 you can create 2D and 3D wood shapes of different types, curtain walls, and several steel stud options were added as well. IntelliCAD 92 now supports import and export for STEP and IGIS file formats. To import a STEP file, use the STEP import command and select a STEP file. A notification balloon appears in the event log when processing is done. So now to add previously saved entities, you have to click on the balloon message. To use import and export for IGIS file formats, use the IGIS import and IGIS export commands. IGS and IGES file formats are available. Talking about ACES-based commands, the Thicken command is now available in IntelliCAD 92, so you can convert a surface into a 3D solid with the specified thickness. Also, a new scale option in the sweep command was added. Next is the external reference change notification. Every time you open a drawing with external references, IntelliCAD updates them automatically. Now you can use the new XREF Notify system variable to get notifications in the event log every time an external reference drawing has been changed. To apply these changes to your drawing, press Reload. If you don't need external reference change notification anymore, set the XREF Notify system variable to zero. Let's move to the overkill command. It sounds scary, but it's a really nice tool. What it does is delete duplicate entities. If you have polylines with too many vertices, overlapping objects, or your drawing is just too heavy and you want to clean it up, you will enjoy working with overkill. I have a drawing with 751 line segments, and what I want to do is call the overkill command, select all objects, and select the necessary options from the dialog. Overkill command deleted 431 vertices and my line segments converted into a single polyline. The new auto-publish command publishes drawings to DWF, DWFX, or PDF files automatically to a specified location. In the auto-publish options dialog, you can specify when, where, what to publish, select which file format the DWG file should be published to, and etc. Automatic Pub turns on and off automatic publishing to DWF PDF files when a drawing is saved or closed. Let's review additions to existing functionality. And the first one, Start Page. Now two options are available for displaying the list of recent drawings, with and without preview. Also skip Start Page Next Time button was added. One more addition in the UI is the new Quick CUI command that allows you to draw commands to the Tool Palette pane. New grips for polygons and rectangles were added to IntelliCAD 902. These new grips are activated with previously available grips by selecting, for example, a rectangle. Using the new grips, you can move, rotate, change width, length or width and length at the same time. All of these changes are reflected in the new rectangle shape section in the properties pane. Grips for polygons look very similar but are more complex. Moving grip is the same, but there are two rotation grips. One rotating the polygon from the midpoint of a segment inscribed angle and one from the end point of a segment circumscribed angle. Also, there are two new grips to change circumscribed radius at the segment endpoint and inscribed radius at the segment midpoint. And all these attributes are available through the properties pane too. Let's review new grips for a square. It's a very special entity that combines grips and properties for both a polygon and a rectangle. Two new grips from the third row allows you to stretch a square. Two rotating grips work the same way as for polygons, and when you're using grips to individually change the width and length, the square is turned into a rectangle and loses extra polygon square grips and properties. New grips are also available for a break line. Now you can change a break line length, move a break line symbol left and right, and stretch it. 
although there are specific grips for rectangles, polygons and break line shapes, you can still use the base polyline grips as well. If you use a base polyline grip to change the shape, it will only be a polyline moving forward and you will lose the shape specific grips and properties. You can specify whether the block editor dialog should or shouldn't be opened with a double click by setting the new block edit lock system variable. When set to 1, the block edit dialog is not allowed and double clicking on a block will open the properties pane. The M text in place editor has a couple of additions too. The first one is support of semantic languages and the second addition is support of new list types. Now you can use different symbols during list definition. New drop-down lists with recent commands and actions are available now for undo and redo buttons on the quick access toolbar with the ability to undo and redo multiple commands. This is all I have for now. Please leave your comments and thank you for watching this video.